Welcome everyone to this amazing world of compilers. And today we're going to talk about the Lexer. And this is a, a, the first video in a series of uh, videos where I'm going to show you, you how to actually do write a compiler, uh, the front end parts, both the Lexer, the parser using OCaml. So a compiler consists of basically three main parts, uh, the front end, uh, where you do the analysis of, of, the, of the program. And then you have typically an optimizer. So before that, you generate some intermediate representation, some IR that is optimized. And then the back end is synthesizing this. That is, it's uh, generating code, typically assembler code or some other back end uh, target language. Uh, and you have the target program. And this is then executed on an execution environment. And we are going to look at the front end part right now. So the first part is the lexing, which is taking a program as input and then generates a sequence of tokens. And if you got a error, you get a lex error. The sequence of tokens are then sent to the parser and the parser is deconstructing these, uh, these tokens. And the parsing step is also called syntax analysis. And if you, it doesn't work, you get a parse error. And from the parser, you generate an AST, that is an abstract syntax tree. From the abstract syntax tree, you do some sort of semantic analysis. And there are different kinds of semantic ana analysis. Typically, the static uh, checking of types is one of the major things, but you can also do some name analysis. And if you get some errors there, you get some type errors. And after that, you basically go on and do the rest of the compilation. So what is lexing? Well, it's basically you have some sort of input program. Here you got a small C program. And you take this program as input to the lexer. Uh, lexer or scanner is also called a scanner. And from that, you, you generate a sequence of tokens or an error. So the sequence of tokens is just that you break down this whole program into different entities. It can be, for example, an integer. Uh, this is uh, then the, the type. So this is a, an identifier or a keyword, foo. Here's, this is a name and an identifier. Uh, you have some parentheses and so on. The lexer doesn't say give any meaning to this. It just breaks down it into tokens. And this is what we are going to do today. And typically, you're ignoring white space. So you're kind of skipping the white space, which can be, for example, space or tabs or, or also the, you know, a new line. Another thing is that you typically ignore the comments in the lexing part. So you remove the comments. So when you get the tokens in the end, you just have the tokens which are interesting that you're going to do the use later on for parsing. We're now going to do some lexing using OCaml. And if you're not familiar with OCaml before, please check out my playlist where I show some fundamental OCaml programming or, or look at some other resources online. But I will assume now that you have some fundamental programming uh, knowledge in OCaml. So let's start by defining the tokens that we want to get out. Uh, we write, create then a file called token.ml. And um, we create a algorithmic data type here for the tokens. So let's write a type. And then we say that we have a token add and uh, in of int. So here we will also store the actual integer value. And then we also create a token end of file. So if we just see what kind of expressions do we want to be able to, to tokenize, things like this. So 33 plus 10, like this kind of expression we would like to be able to tokenize. So the actual lecture is written in uh, a file called lexer.mll. Or, or actually can be called anything as long as it's a, a MLL file. And that is a domain specific language for writing uh, lexers uh, in OCaml lex. So the first thing we have to do is to be able to include uh, the tokens that we just created. So we do open token to do that. And we need to have these curly braces to be able to write arbitrary OCaml code in this, in this file. After that, we define the actual uh, lexical rules. And we do that by writing in rule, 
token. So now we'll create a new rule called token and then we write parse. And it's a little bit strange that we write parse here since it's actually a lexer and not a parser, but that's how it is. And then what we want to do here now is to be able to eat up all the uh, white space. So we don't want to do anything with the white space, we just want to eat it up. So then we define a rule here stating that we will have either a space or a tab or a new line and if we discover any of these characters we should just ignore them so then we call recursively ourselves token and then with the lex buff so this means that we will we will basically just ignore characters and go on then we want to do something special with some of these some of these uh, tokens like for example the plus sign we just say that we will have a plus and then we want to do a add. So we will, would like to return a token add. So we just created this token, right? Like this add here. And now if we find a plus, we just return it. Okay. We construct it and return it. And we want to do the same thing with the multiplication. And then, then we want to do have a number, an integer number. The cool thing here is that you can directly write regular expressions. So here I write that anything between zero and nine will be included, and then with a plus, so that which means that we will have one or more of these ones in a row. And we also want to, of course, to use this this number that we now discover, and then we can write as, and then then give it a name. So then we will now say that lexem here will contain the actual number that we match with the regular expression here. And then we can use this in, in our semantic function here. Then we want to construct an integer. This is the integer constructor here. We want to construct that int, and then we just want to provide the lexem. But note that this lexem here is a string now, and we wanted it to be a integer. So then we can directly just convert it int of string here, convert it to an integer. And then we have this special symbol end of file. We want to construct end of file token. So this is the whole thing. If we want to use this file now, we need to create a, a OCaml file. So we basically compile this domain specific language into a OCaml file. And the tool that is used here is called OCaml Lex, lexer.ml. We can just look at it. You, you actually do not have to look at it uh, normally. So it, it generates a, a table that, that is doing the actual lexing. And then in the end here, we see that we have a token, a function token, and that that token uh, matches on different things and then returns them all these different constructors that we just created. So we will use OCaml build to actually build it uh, now. So we will not uh, use OCaml lex directly. It's actually done automatically. Let's remove the lexer.ml file. So we have now the tokens and, and, and the lexer file. All right. What we want to do now is just to bind this together into a main file. So let's create a main file. We want to print something, right? We can open up printf. Uh, we want to open up token. So since we have the, the tokens uh, defined in, in the token file, this one. Then we want to write a main file main equals like this and the first thing we want to do is to do some lexing so then we create a lex buffer and, and this is available in a module in in the standard libraries called lexing the function is called from string and then we can just lex something lex let's say that we are lexing this then it will lex this and construct our tokens here we have this module module lexing and it constructs different things. For example, this lex buffer that contains a lot of information about positions and so forth. We'll not dive into the details now, but you can see here that you can do it from, from string or from channel. I'll show you later how you can actually do lex directly from standard input, for example. But now we're using this from string. Let's construct a function that returns a token list from now on. So we want to return a token list. Let's show first how we call it. List, so this is the list that we will return. And we can construct this function 
and we provide a lex buff as as input. Let's then construct this function. Lex buff. So it should return a list of tokens. And um, to do that, we need to do some some work. We need to iterate through and call this lex token function that is available in the Alexa that we just generated. So let's create a local recursive function. Let's rec call that work and we'll have an accumulator. We will first do match and then we call this lexer dot token. So now we are calling the lexer that we just created. So this was the one that I showed when you when you compiled le the lexer dot mll. Then we construct a function it's called token. And why token? Well, if we see here, this is because our rule is called token. Then we construct this function. Uh, we just provide the lex buffer. So this is the buffer that is will store the current state of the lexing. If we get back end of file, then we want to just return the accumulated result. Uh, if we get something else, the token T, and um, what we do then is just call ourselves recursively, but add this token to the accumulator. We call our work here like this with an empty list. But since we are accumulating, we will get the result in reverse order. So let's do a list reverse. Okay, this is the get token list. So now we will call this and we will get a list of tokens. Let's try it out. We cannot print the list right now because we don't have a pretty printer, but just print out the length of the list that we get. Like this, we write list print length token list. And let's see if this works or if we get some compilation out. We can just then run OCaml build main and then run it directly. And it worked and we got length five. And that looks correct because we have one, two, three, four, five tokens. All right. So let's uh, pretty print this just for fun. So to see that uh, we can actually look at this uh, list. Pretty printed token function here. So we just pretty print one token. So when we, if we get an add, write add. Okay. Uh, if we got a mall, mall. If we got an int, we got a value there. Would also like to return a string, print f and write int. Now we'll pretty print this integer and then we just return the end of file. So then we can just write list map. So this is the function. So we convert each of the elements there of the token list. Then we can pipe this. So this is a nice feature in, in Okamu. You just can pipe uh, the result. And then we call the list iterator, iterating through and assuming that you have some side effect and the side effect we want to have right now is that we're printing it. So we are printing and then a new line. So this means that we will print each of the tokens on a separate line. Let's see if that works. We compile it again and run it. And you see here that we have int 10, an add operator to mal2. Right, so, so this was just a quick example showing how to construct a lexer and how to use it independently. We'll actually now hook it up to, with a parser to be able to parse some strings. But this, you can see that the lexer is actually just an independent function that you can use for tokenizing some, some something. Okay, thank you. And please check out the next videos about parsing. If you like this video, please subscribe and add a comment and tell me more about what you want to learn about compilers and programming languages.